This is going to be a simple introductory tutorial for 2D sketching, specifically to design something like a three-dimensional geometry for the laser cutter. Make sure that your Fusion 360 is opened and your Z is up on your view cube. If that's not the case, you can go up to preferences and make sure default model orientation is Z up. If you need to change that, hit OK, apply, and you're going to have to exit out of your design and then open up a new one and that view cube should change. To get started, we're always going to right click the top level of our browser. This is our browser tree. This is where all our components, body sketches and planes fall. So let's right click unsaved and we'll create a new component. That way it's its own instance, its own thing, and we can manipulate it and also turn it on and off. To get started, we're going to create a 2D sketch. So we'll make a simple rectangle, constrain it based on its dimensions, and then we'll move forward and create some tabs and other geometry. So to get started, make sure that this is the active component. It'll have a dot next to this component. I'm going to click this once and then click again, and I'm going to call this the bottom. Press enter. That way I know what my component is. If you save your document now, you can create a title for your project and then save it where you'd like. Once it saves, you have a title for your project up top and now you have version one. I'm gonna start by creating a sketch up at the top and I'm gonna select a plane. I can click it here and I want this XY plane. I can also drop down on the origin and find that XY plane here to make sure that I'm on that plane. To draw a rectangle or a line, I have tools up top in the Create menu. I'll start with a rectangle and I'm gonna use a two-point rectangle. I'd like to draw this out in space and I'll constrain it after. If I try to snap to objects, it'll automatically place constraints so to practice, draw your object in random space. Just click, move your mouse, and then click one more time. These little lines here are our constraints. To get out of a tool, press escape. We know that this is a rectangle because these are always horizontal or vertical. That's what that constraint means. So we need three constraints, a length, a width, and then a point where it's going to be placed. To create a dimension for this part, you can go under Create, Dimension, or press D on the keyboard. Click the line you'd like to dimension, move up, and click one more time. I'm going to make this a six inch width, and I'll make this slightly different four inch width. Okay, the material I'm working in is millimeters. If you decide that you started working in inches and you'd like to move to millimeters, you can go to your document settings, click inches, change your units, and go to millimeters. Hit OK, and it should change right on the fly. Also, all of your grid changed as well. So let's click this, and let's make this 150, and we'll make this 100, just to make it simple. The last thing that I need to do is click the coincident. That's gonna take one point of this rectangle and move it onto another point in the grid. I'd like this bottom corner to be placed at the origin. Notice how my sketch turned black and now I know it's fully constrained. If there's any blue parts, it means that it's not constrained and we need to figure out what is not making this geometry complete. Right now, we know that this is vertical always, and this is horizontal always, same with these two. And then we have a dimension for them, and we know that this corner is always gonna sit on the origin at zero, zero. That means it's fully constrained. I can finish my sketch now. I can hit the home on my view cube, and let's extrude. Let's make it three dimensions by clicking extrude here. The material that I'm using is gonna be five millimeters. So I'll type five, and if I work through my menu, it's asking for a profile. I selected the sketch. I'm gonna start from the plane. I'm only gonna go up one direction. I'm gonna tell it to go a distance. 
the distance is five and I'm gonna have no taper so it's gonna be at a 90 degree and it'll create a new body for me. So I'll hit okay. And now I've got a three dimensional rectangular prism that's 150 by 100 by five. And that's a good start. I would save the project from here. What I need to do next is create a box that folds inside of itself. So let's create one of our sides. I'll look at this from the top, and what I'm going to do is change the sketch that I initially drew. So in order to do that, we can hit the drop down on the bottom component, find our sketches, and we see we have one sketch. We could create another sketch, or we can edit the existing sketch. So I'm going to right click this and edit my sketch. I like that my sketch appears and I've lost my 3D geometry. If you notice at the bottom, we have a timeline and the extrude is grayed out. That means I'm working previously on a part that existed before I extruded. So I'm going to start creating what I think should be my geometry. Again, this is just practice. So I'm going to draw my shape over here. What you could do is go down to your grids and snaps and snap to grid and then try to align yourself with the grid here. So if your part is an even measurement, we know that each of my grid is five millimeters. And this will make your life really easy because then you can draw your tabs out in space. I don't like doing that when I can dimension everything. So I'm going to use the line tool and hit L. I'm going to turn off my snap to grid and I'm just going to draw this out in space. My general shape and I'm going to create a bunch of even tabs. So those should match. Once you're done, you can hit escape. It doesn't matter that it's bigger. I'm going to dimension the whole part. So again, I'll press D on my keyboard. And I know that the distance from here is going to be five millimeters because I need to insert my wood here. So I'll click this and write five millimeters and press enter. That means that this is also going to be five millimeters. So when I click, I'm just going to click this dimension up here and press enter. I'm going to do that for the remaining. Click here and I will select that top measurement and press enter. You could also click and type D5 and that will also create the same measurement. I will click and select that top measurement, press enter, and then one more time I'll click that line and I'll press D5. That all works. Now I have a five millimeter width. I want this point and this point to be the distance of my side and I'm going to have it relate to this distance here so I'm going to click that distance it's D2 and I'll press enter. Before I constrain this I want to create the widths of all my tabs so if I want I can make this 10 just to add a little variation I'll create this one and make this 10 and press enter and I'll create this one and make this 10 and press enter. I need to know the these two are equal. I want this to be in the middle. So I have an equal constraint. I'll click this line and this line and now everything is spread out evenly. The one thing left to do is to con coincident this to my part. Once I snap it in place you can see it turned black. This is a really good start for creating your tabs. To quickly take the tabs you created and move them to another side, you could use the mirror tool. And in order to do that, we can create one quick line, slide it amongst the top, and find the triangle. That's a midpoint. Click the midpoint and drag it straight down. Find the other triangle, make sure it's 90, and click. I don't want this to split my design, so I'm going to click that line and make it construction or hit X on the keyboard. 
Now this is one part. That's just a line for reference. So to mirror my part, I'm gonna click mirror. I'm gonna select my lines that I wanna mirror. And then I'm gonna select my mirror line, which is this middle line and voila, they pop up on the other side and I'll hit okay. So now, anytime I change my material, I can hit this top number. Let's say I'm using three millimeter, they should all change. The beauty of CAD. I'm gonna bring that back to five millimeter and I'll move forward. I now have two sides that will tab into each other really nicely. So for now, I'm gonna finish my sketch. It still looks like a giant uh, rectangle. So let's find out what happened. Down at the timeline, I'm gonna right click that and hit edit feature. My profile now has all of my geometry selected. I'm gonna hit X and then I'm gonna come back and hit this middle one. I'll hit okay and now it's fully adapted. I now have all my tabs on these single parts and I can move forward to keep designing my other parts. I'll let you work on doing the tops and bottoms and filling in the rest of the parts to make a 3D uh, model. Your angles must be at 90 degrees because we are using a laser cutter. So make sure that everything fits together at 90. You're welcome to lay your parts out flat, do things in a full uh, sketch. Uh, just make sure everything is constrained. This is for practice and an introduction. We'll go over more in class. Thank you.